please brace yourself for the mind-bending journey into Time Bandits. I'm here, uh, I'm Tom, and I'm with uh, Mike. How you doing, Mike? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic, man. Uh, <clears throat> we had a heck of a week. Uh, we are full into, into the summer silly season. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> this happened this happened last week a little bit um hopefully i'll wait there okay good yeah, yeah all right yeah. anyway the, the 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 show goes on <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm doing great yeah uh i i uh, kind of missed our, our ai generated help with uh when, when we were doing nerding out uh we got a lot of help with the uh, ai so i i said to my computer uh uh pull up some uh nerd related intros and then um and then I don't have voice activation, so I had actually type it in. And then uh, <laughs> to chat GPT. So I uh, hope you liked the intro. I have a few others. Uh, I think that was the best one, though. I like it. Well, we are, we are uh, as we all, we have, we, we definitely have made a covenant uh, and, and a promise with our, our audience. We thank you so much for, for showing up and, and watching our, our humble little show here. Mm -hmm. Um, but we will, we are always trying to improve and kind of get better here and there a little bit. Um, as the thing has gone on, God knows we, we started at just a, a pathetic zoom, uh, <laughs> whatever the hat, what, what everybody else was mm -hmm. using for the, for the post pandemic, uh, nonsense or whatever. Uh, and Zoom became... and I had a Chromebook and a... yeah, <laughs> my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my uh, main computer was uh, down for the count for a while. So <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I think you actually brought yours out of retirement too. If I if yeah. I recall, you had to bring out the old one, <laughs> yeah. Oldie Goldie. Yeah, I, yeah. And I, yeah. I think I, I've had a few machine switches here and there, and we definitely have had some some switching going on with our uh, streaming platform. But anyway, but um, the cool thing the cool thing is you could do a podcast even with like a you know, a tablet or something. You know, you could crack it out and uh so yeah you out the audience if you ever think hey i want to talk uh talk of, like these nerds do you can you can you could definitely can yeah 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 so you got a you got a wonderful intro for uh for us today and tee us up here i'm gonna i'm gonna bring us uh we're gonna start the uh plugging the commercial section of the paid sponsorship of ourselves uh mm -hmm. plugging our, our bona fides here uh as it were but we are the first less nerdum uh always available on youtube uh as well as our, our website what's not quite up that that's just a yet another nail in my coffin to get it done <laughs> uh, but as it as it were we're also on uh, tom heads up our social medias there over in uh the reddit land mm -hmm. uh with our our you can you can hit them up there have a good conversation uh we always we try to share out the things that are um like or adjacent um, subreddits um, but sometimes those mm -hmm. get kind of knocked out but it is what it is um, also, yeah, on, you can see which which subreddits I get um, killed from or banned from right. <laughs> for spamming. You, damn you for spamming! Uh, but yeah, I also have the uh, the Twitter X account, uh, and uh, yeah, I just use that to promote our, our stuff. I don't get into the old X. <laughs> yeah, the old extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that and uh, I, I hear you could. Um, uh, Elon's uh, uh, put the ban uh, took the ban off of uh, all all type of uh, porn or whatnot. You could uh, just upload it, but 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 don't don't worry, you won't be getting any uh, p uh, porn of us. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just something... on our channel. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Well, somewhat family friendly. I wouldn't say that we're a hundred percent, but we uh, well, mm -hmm. we do cuss and, and let mm -hmm. a slip of the of the tongue. But anyway, um, I am available on apit uh, Inc. Uh, it's where I do a little bit more strolling through the world. Uh, and my opinions and, and things I observe and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. mostly kind of just dumb YouTube picks that I found here or there, uh, <laughs> or some dumb opinion I have. Um, also available on uh, Twitter, uh, and, and uh, the Yats is what I call our, our uh, link tree or whatever you want to call it. I got to add the Reddit, and there's so, it's sometime soon. But anyway, um, that's our plugging. Uh, I did want to cover. Um, you had wanted to. You wanted a spotlight on. Uh, Furiosa, uh, our last uh, mm -hmm. last bid that we did. Uh, so, uh, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, we had fun talking about it. Check it out. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I will uh, plug our last uh, thing, which is uh, will be released later tonight, I believe, uh, which was House of the Dragon Hot D. So uh, we're mm -hmm. uh, we are back in that. I'm very happy to have something to look forward to watch. Um, actually, a few things to be honest. Mm -hmm. Uh, but th this one is the the primo um, top of the list thing that everybody 
talks about if anybody does it anymore if they uh, if everybody kind of catches it on sunday night and, and then brings it into work with them on monday morning uh yeah. it definitely makes life a little bit easier to talk about that but without further ado uh we we uh, tom had mentioned this one which i had never seen um this, this is a, a <laughs> not just a cult classic but a childhood um if you had seen it you know you know all about it i did not uh, but this is the beautiful thing of re rediscovering these things uh, uh, with uh, with Tom here on the show with Time Bandits. Um, yeah, so uh, you want to uh, uh, tee us up there to, to get us into the uh, into the mix here and, and get into it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was a, would be a good time to bring it up because uh, there's the uh, new Apple TV uh, uh, re uh, reimagining of uh, Time Bandits uh, as a TV series coming out uh i think sometime this summer uh td ytd who we've uh covered extensively on uh, this channel uh is come is uh directing and writing uh, at least the first episode and i think he's gonna be the producer of it and uh you know uh terry gilliams uh is executive producer i don't think he has very much involvement in this uh so uh, I don't have high hopes for the tv series just based mm -hmm. on uh, we could talk about that a little bit later but uh so time bandits uh to um see it uh the back in the day uh you could actually <laughs> drop your kids off at the theater and let them go to the movies and then uh you know it, you could uh, at the local the theater we had one um in town so uh, my my parents if they didn't want to watch the movie uh they would just drop us off we'd see the movie and uh you know uh, get picked up after the movie so this is one of those that uh me and my uh younger sister wanted to see i don't think anyone else in the family wanted to see it so uh so we got to see it we, i think that's not, maybe one of the first ones we did like that and um really? yeah i i um the reason why i wanted to see this because I, I was i had no idea what monty python was i didn't sure. find out about them till uh, when i was a teenager uh but yeah i was um uh, 10 uh, 10 or 11, i think i was 11 and um i was i was deep into star wars everything i i needed to know everything about star wars i i read about star wars i i knew all the actors i knew who played c3po and and who played r2d2 which was kenny baker and i found out kenny baker was in this movie so i had to see it because it had a star wars person in it and it was science fiction and it was a kid movie okay I, i'm sold so uh <laughs> so yeah i went to see it and uh yeah i was kind of kind of blown away by this movie when i was a kid because yeah it's it's a kid's movie but not a kid's movie <laughs> in the same breath yeah it it yeah this one was a was really cool to see and watch um i'm glad you this is kind of the the joy this is the first first time i had ever come into contact mm -hmm. with this thing uh, and i of course grew up monty python you know my dad you know mm -hmm. uh, that was a that was a regular standard thing uh yeah. and, and and not just them but also with friends because their <laughs> dad did the same thing <laughs> yeah so we would we would uh, quote it ad nauseum it was one of the mm -hmm. probably the probably the 25 movies that we would uh quote between ourselves all, all the funny ones or whatever yeah. um but this this one was really fun um i really liked it because it kind of took me back um to like to like what movies used to be <laughs> i guess or like it had that it had that feel of of uh of childhood and wonder kind of like how 80s mm -hmm. movies do um mm -hmm. this is no different um so it, it fit right in uh i could no doubt in what i what i've heard is in the and i i think i told you like uh i was brushing up on some some terry interviews uh mm -hmm. with the with the director uh, mm -hmm. creator pretty much yeah uh, and just like watch a bunch of interviews some some on this you know to kind of get background and some just on in his opinion on general hollywood mm -hmm. or why it's so hard to make a movie or that that you know that sort of thing mm -hmm. it's very interesting to hear uh hear how people treat that uh but yeah th this one was um it was it, it, it surprised me because <laughs> i kind of went in blind a little bit um and i think it's good to do that once in a while um but it, it took me for a uh David Warner, he did a good job in this too, <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was glad. And and is there like I, I did kind of keep in some of the, doing the research after I saw it. Uh, I this this was part of a trilogy that he was trying to do or did. Uh, uh, I think it's um, loosely it, something he, like that. Yeah, I think it uh, became a trilogy after 
uh, um, post uh, post putting the After movies out, I think he, he on reflection he goes, oh, these can be grouped quite nicely. But basically, uh, how it came about, he was doing uh, he was trying to get um, Brazil off the ground, and um, uh, Dennis O'Brien uh, he had the um, I think he produced the uh, the last uh, Monty Python movie, The Meaning of Life, and um, you know, in, in Terry was trying to get Brazil, but Dennis couldn't get his head around what Brazil was and was kind of hesitant about making it. And so, um, you know, Terry goes, well, what, what does everybody like a, a kid's movie? So, uh, and Terry Gilliam <laughs> is quoted as saying, I don't like kids movies. So, so he didn't want to, he didn't want a precocious little kid that, that was cute and he didn't want little cute things in the movie he wanted it you know <laughs> to be uh, kind of real and so um so yeah as he wrote it he uh, wanted it from a, a kid's perspective and he wanted and um if you watch the movie uh look watch it with this in mind that it's all shot from a almost all shot from a kid's point of view it's a uh, you know a kid's eye level up so everything's kind of larger than life because you're looking at it, even though maybe the sets aren't quite as big as they normally are or, or, or can be uh they look big because we're looking at it from that kid's perspective and he didn't think a kid could carry a movie uh so he wanted um some other actors with it but he wanted to keep that eye level still yeah I so that, that was yeah that was the reason why he uh got the um the actors of shorter stature in there uh, because they would be on his eye level, not because he thought it would be funny. He he thought of it more of a technical aspect, and that's one of the, the cool things about this movie is, uh, even though it has little people in it, um, they're never the jokes never at their expense. They're they're never. very much a part of the movie. They're they're the action stars of the movie. Um, yeah, so so yeah, it's it's kind of odd uh because it, it kind of celebrates them as as actors you know most of the time they're in ewok outfits or, or <laughs> r2d2 things True. so so they're covered yeah. up but but yeah this is the they're truly the the stars of the movie and uh you would think uh, that um you know any type of remake or anything like that would spotlight that again talk about that a little later <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I noticed that too. Uh, the, the, just the, um, and this is kind of like one of the, uh, not a curse, but like a blessing, I think. Um, it hasn't run movies for me yet, but since we've been doing this thing, you kind of get, you, you, um, quickly glom on to like, if you see something repetitive in nature, um, or kind of like the, how they're framing shots or whatever. And mm -hmm. this is kind of like why it's it, it inspired me to kind of go down endless rabbit holes on YouTube for filmmaking and mm -hmm. cinematography and just kind of the art that goes into this. So this is like kind of another knock on benefit of, of doing this podcast thing, like where you absorb a lot of movies. Uh, Cause you can only talk so much about like what's going on on the screen before you mm -hmm. uh, end up with something, um, whatever, you know? Uh, but in any case, I did, did notice that uh, this is kind of like, um, uh, like a perfect Saturday morning <laughs> kind of, <laughs> Or, or family evening film to kind of put on uh, and watch. Uh, mm -hmm. And like, it, it, my, my kiddos are on vacation. So I like, I kind of sucked. I was like, I kind of wanted, <laughs> I definitely had the urge to like kind of sit down and, with them and watch this. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, I'm, it, regardless, um, this one, regardless of whatever, uh, this one begs you to watch it multiple times. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. sure there's like tons of stuff that you'll, you'll get because they move through all. They cover a lot of ground. <laughs> yeah, I, I I noticed that the kid, the kiddo, and the um and the um the actors around him were all equals, you know, mm -hmm. and they're all kind of going through. And like what I what I saw was the um they they tried to model the um the 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 actors after kind of the cast of uh Monty Python or whatever, and like they they kind of loosely, you know, kind of align this one like with you know. <laughs> Uh, regular uh, sh like a kiddo type mm -hmm. height stature yeah. and and but like but like a, a older face mm -hmm. that was yeah. kind of like um i don't know like a weathered or or you know um mm -hmm. i guess maybe it makes, makes it a little bit easier um for the suspension of disbelief <laughs> if, <laughs> if a bunch of doors you know come tumbling out of your your uh, your cupboard 
uh, mm-hmm. your your uh, your pantry or whatever. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, the um, cool thing about the the movie is, um, yeah, that they they take everything. Um, every element uh to its full extent like um like the the characters of the uh, of the time bandits themselves they're they're kind of rough and tumble they're they're a, a kind of motley crew uh that come out of there and um i think it works beautifully because uh if they were um regular size adults they would be very much intimidating and very scary and um, you know, dressed the same and looked as uh, similar. Uh, the kid would be intimidated. It would be quite frightening to watch on screen uh, them coming at them. But them being um, smaller stature, it, it kind of relieves that that tension a little bit. And um, they, they, you know, they you, you kind of smile at them. And um, but they, the but. <laughs> On the, on the surface and uh, underneath, there they're kind of uh, they're they're some bad dudes. They're not 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 the uh, the lovable characters that you would normally see in a children's the, movie. The, um, they're very much, ex- yeah. <laughs> yeah, like what you would expect to encounter in like a Mark Twain, you know, kind of kind of thing. It's kind of what a, <laughs> the impression yeah. I got or the feel. I don't know why. But. Yeah, yeah. There's there's uh, they're 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 not very moral like at one point um in their travels uh they they run across a a couple of people tied up to a tree and uh you would think okay well they're gonna help them out they just walk right past them (laughs) it's like nope nope nope, we're we're more interested in those those bandits that were robbing you (laughs) yeah they're not even they're not even beating around the bush about morality or or good guys or bad guys or Mm anti-hero or anything they're just like nope we're time bandits (laughs) We're here to rob yeah, you. <laughs> exactly. There, there are some, uh, maybe some moral lessons to learn from this, but but not many, and uh, and they're they're kind of buried. So that's another thing I liked about this movie. I I um even as a kid watching it, I uh, I was very uh, sensitive to you know the um, you know the how how children's movies are they they try to play it safe they have a nice cuddly things they don't ever challenge you they don't mm-hmm. kind of scare you uh i kind of always kind of look down on the, that stuff you know i i would watch it but uh but this is sort of what hit my sweet spot this this movie i it felt like i was watching a, a, a kid's movie but it, it was i felt it was a more adult that it it was um, you know, kind of that that buffer in between that I I was getting something that I wouldn't get normally from a kids movie. I I, I got that sense even as a kid watching it. Um, yeah, they, they don't talk down to kids. That's one thing. And two, mm-hmm. the other thing is um, they don't shy away from showing, <laughs> like in most kids things like this. Um, it's kind of like the death is implied. You know, because you see mm-hmm. you see a blow that happens off camera. <laughs> But in the you see oh you know or whatever they didn't, nope they had right right <laughs> right <laughs> right in the middle uh right there uh front and center uh you saw yeah. everything um and it yeah. was a, it wasn't um infantilizing at all um, right it's sort of like a, we always made fun of as kids we'd make fun of GI Joe because no one died in it there you know right. you see a plane blow up you see a guy in a parachute right 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 yeah, uh, the, 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 I was going to play a little bit of, a, of the clip here. Um, All right. <laughs> to kind of give folks a little bit of a sample of like this. Because it really, ha- you have to see it. <laughs> and that's, you know what? That actually, that's, that was actually, that perfectly segues into like what we were talking about. Uh, it's not just the good ones, you know. Um, it's the, uh, it's the, the full, the full thing that you get. You get a full it is like it is, i if i i was just remarking to you like how it it, it would be it, i don't know how the apple tv one is cuz i'm just going to consider that a completely different thing oh yeah <laughs> um just because of the sake of time and um who knows I'm not i don't I'm not prejudicing myself toward it but mm-hmm. um uh, coming and seeing this thing and then kind of like going and seeing the, the modern thing um i don't know but <laughs> yeah, what I it, what I do know is is the quality of this is on point, um, and it is it, it is engaging and, and interesting, 
Um, I would be, you know, it, um, it would just be interesting. I'd also like to see what my kiddos say, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's um, kind of a, it is it does have its pace of its own. It's a uh, maybe a little bit slower pace than um, oh, a what, little bit pokey, what, yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's that's um, that's of its time, and uh, yeah, I, I I like movies that that breathe. I um, you know, some people say. Uh, it has a slow pace as a detriment to the movie. I always, when someone says it has a slow pace, I go, hmm, okay. Maybe I might be interested in this movie because uh, <laughs> it's taking time to get to know uh, the characters and let, let things breathe. Um, the cool thing about it, uh, also, that it being um, former Monty Python people, is that it, it drew in a lot of stars uh, to be in it. Like, uh, like Sean Connery is the biggest one. Uh, in the Even in the script. Um, That's... Yeah, that's the, another feather in its cap. Um, yeah. Frankly, frankly, uh, it also had some uh, um, uh, famous actress that we. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to it. There, there there's <laughs> definitely. Um, I can see why you can why you like this because it has aspects of little small touches of horror, kind of <laughs> sprinkled through it. Um, yeah. For lack yeah. of a better, word, and I'm sure there's a better way to put that, but uh, um, but yeah, yeah the, Sean, Sean Connery was awesome to see. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And, in the in the script, uh, they there's a thing where um, when they were introducing the character in that, uh, they said that uh, Terry Gilliam wrote in the script that the guy pulls off the helmet and uh, Sean Connery or someone looking like Sean Connery uh, <laughs> is revealed <laughs> and. Uh, 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 yeah, luckily enough, uh, Sean Connery was a Monty Python fan and had read the script and said, I want to do this movie. Um, so, yeah, I took a... ...to do the movie. Um, <laughs> he kind of had them pay him directly. Also, as a, a FU to his agent, for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah. so they wouldn't get, yeah. he wouldn't get the 10%. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I don't blame him. But yeah, I, I think uh, Sean Connery's career was kind of going... It was like after the Bond films that it was kind of like mm -hmm. not in the greatest... It wasn't It wasn't at the high heights of, of it. It was mm -hmm. more down down a little bit, a little bit further <laughs> low. But he, he did. Of course, we all know he, he took back off again. But... Uh, yeah, was and, uh, cool. there was a scene where uh, he gets on a horse in the in the movie, and uh, they don't show him getting on the horse because he said, I, "I'm too old to look cool getting on a horse anymore." So, so you're just gonna have to cut to me on the horse and do whatever you can, but uh, <laughs> you're not gonna film me getting on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least he's smart. At least he knows his, he knows his angles. What what works for him, and what doesn't. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that's the that's the beauty of this thing. Um, what you you kind of get there, and it's too it's funny too because you see um, you you see uh, uh you, Kevin who's the main who's the main uh, mm -hmm. protagonist here who's yeah. the kiddo, he yeah. you see this very much through his eyes, and you see kind of like um, they don't beat around the bush. Um, they, I wouldn't say they had like a Lonely Hearts Club over here, but they had mm -hmm. um. You know, a little Beatles reference, uh, but <laughs> but uh, all joking aside, um, you know, it, you you can see this kiddo, and he he just like wants to, you know, mm -hmm. he wants to do a little bit more, and then you see the parents, and they're vegged out, on mm -hmm. you know, they're watching. This is in the first ten minutes of the film, mm -hmm. uh, and they're all vegged out, and they're like watching some RoboCop, um, uh, Paul Verhoeven type <laughs> crit critique on sub critique. You could argue um on their screen of like you know people like uh, it's something yeah, about some, uh, some outlandish game show yeah, yeah that, so uh, something about money or or your life or something <laughs> yeah, or yeah. i don't know it was just like uh, the, the absolute word it was like a little mm -hmm. bit of idiocracy that's another thing too which is like um it's almost like it became prophetic um and we'll get into the themes too toward the end because it can get mm -hmm. a little bit spoilerly uh, a little bit um not too much mm -hmm. but um <laughs> You kind of see this. It kind of sets up a, a, in a way. I mean, it sets up a more more modern fairy a fairy tale or a fable. You know. Yeah, um, the, a lot of the cool um, things in it, like uh, Terry Gilliam, they got the the furniture in for the uh, for the living room uh, where the Kevin and his family lives, and it came the the furniture came wrapped in plastic, and he goes, "Oh, that's cool. Let's let's leave it like that." <laughs> he goes, "It's kind of." Yeah, so so yeah, there's um, a lot of cool like, like little happenstance things in movies that happen that just kind of um, just kind of works out, and uh, it, it's kind of perfect. It's like you get 
understand the character, how things look, of uh, the latest technology. Um, yeah, and they they're they're sucked in on the, the boob the tube as they yeah <laughs> the boob tube as we yep. used to say. Um, watching that, uh, ignoring <laughs> ignoring Kevin. Uh, and so you get no sympathy for the parents <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, now, one of the things I was kind of, uh, thinking about is like, yeah, you were talking about how outlandish the, the TV show they were watching. It's like, well, I was thinking, yeah, it's outlandish, uh, for the time, uh, when it was, was put out. But nowadays, if a TV show looked like that, it would be no big deal. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> probably quaint and interesting, um, mm-hmm. to be honest, compared to like what you see nowadays, like you yeah. see, you see in here, you read about, um, you know, we talk about the fragmentation of the media landscape mm-hmm. and the I- entertainment sphere for your eyeballs or for mm-hmm. your time and attention. Da, 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 da. Um, but Absolutely. you, you hear <laughs> stories about, um, you know, moms, <laughs> who manage their Instagram influencer kiddos. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's uh, just kind of disgusting things that kind of ar- arise from that. Um, and and maybe some wholesome things too. I don't know. Yeah. But, but yeah. In, anyway, the point being is like you, you see this very opinionated um, story being told to you. Um, mm-hmm. And I love it because it does it perfectly. It does it. There, there is no exposition. It's your eyes. You, you're drawn in and you can't help but be drawn toward the kiddo because you're seeing everything from his level anyway. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just goes, it just keeps continues on from there. I mean, um, they really also do. Um, I didn't hear anybody talk about it. Of course, I didn't really get too deep in the research for it, but like, it would be really cool to kind of track down the, um, the camera folks um, and the sh- thinking behind some of the shots because they, mm-hmm. they, they, they use uh, terraces and elevated platforms. Um, very, um, extra so i think um and i think that's because you're getting so much of that shot up from a kiddo's perspective you know from like knee height up <laughs> so to speak waist mm-hmm. height up if you're you know if you're a normal adult a normal height uh which is just interesting um mm-hmm. and then they you know they they're going up on platform or whatever or, or they're doing this and they're always tumbling too they're always like mm-hmm. um uh free free flow falling and and they they the way that they did the practical effects of this too is what I was really, I really liked. I, I really mm-hmm. appreciate that even more mm-hmm. <laughs> since we, we go through time here and, and watch these things. Um, and they did it very well. Uh, and and uh, that would also be another fascinating aspect to kind of inside baseball of, of this stuff, which is just fascinating. Um, yeah. And, and Terry said that uh, there, uh, I, I watched the Criterion version and also listened to the commentary, which uh, I obviously believe- had Terry in it. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I saw but, the Criterion one. I think that's the one that's available streaming on on Max. Um, okay, yeah, 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 and he, um, he actors the 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 smaller statured actor, actors didn't have stunt doubles uh, because you can't <laughs> yeah, getting a getting a, uh, a stunt man of that size um, it was it was a bit hard back then. So uh, so yeah, <laughs> they they all kind of had to do their own stunts. Uh, so yeah, and they, they're all gung ho for it. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> the uh, people uh, running the show were were kind of hesitant, you know. But uh, but yeah, we're always kind of clenching their teeth there, um, hoping they don't get hurt because yeah, they were doing some some crazy stuff. Uh, yeah. And, uh, one of the other things I like about it is, yeah, they they treat the Kevin the uh, main actor, and also Terry said that he didn't want one of those cute, precocious little Hollywood actors uh, playing Kevin, uh, and uh, he said that they one of his uh, casting people brought in. Um, this kid that she thought was perfect for him mm-hmm. for the role, and uh, he uh, his brother came along, and uh, his brother was kind of shy and off to the corner, and um, Terry was like, "Can I talk to him?" <laughs> and uh, that's the kid that that's in the movie. Uh, they he uh, he picked him huh. because yeah, he had a heck had a a bit of a, a presence to him, but he yeah. was kind of reserved um and and kind of thoughtful and he thought well that's that's the 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 type of character they wanted and right. it, it plays uh, wonderfully in the movie because he's he's a uh, the main character but he um he's more of a an observer for the most part and he only uh, you know steps up uh, occasionally to make his presence known and it, it, you know then when you need him to be present he's there and delivers but yeah Absolutely. it's it's um yeah he, He's he's uh, almost a supporting character, but he's the main character of the movie, and it, it kind of works because he's got so many 
flamboyant and over the top people around him, he doesn't need to stand out as well. Uh, he 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 serves his role quite quite beautifully, and being being like us, the observer of the of the piece, and then stepping forward when he needs to be. They they blend them so many so well together, mm -hmm. uh, and that, and that kind of no wonder he did you know Monty Monty Python. This this had this had fingerprints of that all over it too, which mm -hmm. is another secondary layer of loving it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, even if it was terrible, which it wasn't, um, but it, had it been, it would have been cute and in cheesy and and things all in the right ways if you are a monty python fan at all yeah <laughs> um, but you you saw that it, they do the perfect blending of having these very noisy kind of things going on, <laughs> on the screen but still be able to retain your attention and you not lose track of what's going on like modern films like where you you know like you'll it drives me nuts like they'll 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 like teleport the fight it, it, like they're fighting in a phone booth and all of a sudden they're like doing moves that like they're in like a warehouse or something you know like it it, it causes visual confusion for the for the for the thing i don't know if you know what i'm talking about there but like uh like just bad cuts and whatnot this is like kind of more in the era where they kept the cuts longer uh a scene you know kind of more coherent uh and, and it comes through for sure um as it were uh and i i think uh, Tom, I think we'll be back here in a minute. Uh, we're just have internet. There you go. There, you, there you are. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. The what I also like is uh, well, you know, they're known for Monty Python and um, uh, very childish but adult humor. Uh, whereas um, yes. this movie, uh, you know, some people <laughs> that do that aren't able to dial it back uh, to. Uh, a child's perspective uh but this movie does it beautifully um and it does it smartly um a lot of the jokes uh that are sort of um kind of they're, they're kind of uh, scaled back uh, like say uh to what a child would know at that time so you know they they hit upon the you know the classics like you know the titanic um the robin yeah. hood every kid knows about that so he kind of plays with um plays with your uh, the kid's knowledge of that, but also kind of, especially with Robin Hood, kind of turns it on its head. It's sort of like, okay, well, you know Robin Hood, but you don't know this Robin Hood. <laughs> and, and... And... and uh... So some uh, uh, Mimsy and uh, what's his name? <laughs> their their jokes are maybe uh, beyond the kids, but uh, but a lot of times the the jokes are are within the the kids realm. Like there's a joke about the reveal that they're on the Titanic. Um, that that uh, reveal, even a kid will go, "Oh, I got it," you know. <laughs> right, right. And well, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the Robin Hood, like they and they they threw bones in there for the adults too. Not quite. Quite not as heavy and hard as they do nowadays, like for some things, but right. they, they they do keep yeah. you there. Like the uh, the Robin Hood one, uh, when he, they they're leaving and they're like, um, uh, he said something like he said something to the effect of like uh, awful people or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, oh, they're all, <laughs> robbing you know, the poor, you know. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I, you know, I think um, I think Monty Python and this movie really formed what my I I like and. Um, my my sense of humor was very yeah. much educated by that because that that line of <laughs> oh they're just awful people uh, that that made me laugh so hard when when I was a kid and um, that <laughs> that line stuck with me and when it hit hit again and when I was watching it again this time it, it really made me laugh again because yep. I was like oh yeah I remember that <laughs> yeah when, um, when when they make you laugh they hit you hard pretty 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 yeah pretty and well. if you're even into the Monty Python or the Benny Hill or that kind of yeah. right and then um, for sure I am. For my dad. Yeah. 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 And I think this may have been the first thing I saw John Cleese in. So a lot of these actors in. Because, yeah, um, I don't think um, uh, Monty Python came to us. I think when I was uh, maybe 13 or 14, they started showing it on PBS. Mm. They eventually started showing it on MTV. And everybody was like, every, every kid at school was like, oh, did you see this show called Monty Python? Yeah. <laughs> It's like that was kind of like uh, you know should we be watching this? Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, 
Yeah, oh, yeah. It, I don't was... think I, I saw it in theaters until years later, like when they do like a special anniversary release or something very regional. <laughs> if, if in... mm -hmm. Oh, but yeah, Monty Python is one that is. Uh, is uh, Sounds like it's near. And, well, I yeah, already know. Yeah. Uh, I already know. We all share that that for sure. Yeah, and uh, with uh, Terry Gilliam wrote this with Michael Palin, which is another Monty Pythoner. Uh, and um, Michael Palin says that um, you know Terry brought the idea to him, and uh, he he said Terry's sort of like the big picture guy. He does the kind of the plotting and get the story uh, all settled in, and he's. Um, he wanted Michael to kind of fill out the characters and the dialogue and stuff. And so Michael said that he's, it's probably more, uh, 70% Terry, 30% Michael. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely <laughs> kind of see the, uh, uh, the humor of, of Michael Palin and you can see how, you know, those guys, uh, <laughs> work together quite well. No, absolutely. Yeah. The, well, it's just classic, you know, like the, uh, from the life of O'Brien to, you know, to this, mm -hmm. you know. There, there's little sprinklings of little things that you recognize and are kind mm -hmm. of uh, hallmarks of that era and, the, and those people um, you're mm -hmm. used to. You're used to their visual language a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're used to kind of the um, the setup a little yeah. bit. You, you, I'm not not that you can completely see it coming all the way down the road, but you know mm -hmm. it's kind of like um, or it'll surprise you in a very funny way. You know, yeah, uh, which which is always good. <laughs> yeah. And um, the cool thing is, yes, Sean Connery brought a lot to the movie, even though, you know, he's he's only in it a, a little bit. Um, the the part they said that they'd kind of beefed up the dialogue between um, the Sean character character uh, Agamemnon with the the kid Kevin, and they told a, a lot of it through dialogue, and they realized. Um, and Sean Connery kind of pushed it is like uh, less is more um, that that relationship um, it, it it's it's a natural relationship that what did I get kind of cut out um, yeah, you yeah. said yeah you, you were saying it was a little bit more uh, yeah, yeah, the they they kind of, uh, yeah, they kind of cut cut a lot of the dialogue out and uh, it, it made it more simple. Like with the uh, Sean Carney goes, I, I can do magic tricks, so uh, <laughs> they kind of put that into it. Uh, he brought that to the table, and yeah, the relationship is kind of born between them through that little magic trick that they do. And and uh, the less said was was probably the best, you know, uh, him him just saying, okay, well, this is my son, and um, is yeah, you know, there's there's a that kind of just brings in kind of the heartwarming center of the movie uh, that's kind of needed and is uh, kind of touched upon again at the end. Uh, but we'll we'll maybe talk about that a little later. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you 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 get this this mm -hmm. you're in this epic adventure um, for, for the ages. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. no, uh, no, no cap, uh, as the kids say. Uh, <laughs> and you you go with them and you. Um, you know, the, you're the rascals. You, you, you're, you're hanging out with the rascals. You're hanging out with the, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, um, the, uh, uh, there's another word for it, but like, you know, bandits, uh, obviously, but, um, right. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're Rap, kind of, rap um, scallions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, rap yeah. scallions. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That would be, that's the perfect world to describe, you know, the in protagonist, antagonist, whatever you want to kind of, kind mm -hmm. of rolled into one, <laughs> one thing. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it kind of pushes forth the idea that well, Kevin is is well read. He's uh, yeah, he's kind of educating his parents on uh, stuff at the beginning of, of stuff he's read. You know, he's you know he's kind of explaining some of the historical stuff. And um, when he when he gets up with these time bandits, I think it works well with the stature of them because you know he could kind of hold his own if they're all adults bigger than him. Um, he wouldn't be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with them, so to speak, and uh, be able to kind of make his presence known and you know his his information. You know, they start looking looking to Kevin for you know uh, help as well, uh, which may not have worked uh, with um, you know with the uh, without people of uh, their their stature. Um, and he he was a really good actor as well. I forget his name. It's um. 
who was it? Uh, da, da, da. Uh, David Rappaport. Uh, he was. Uh, yeah, David Rappaport. Like, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's a, gr- a great actor, and then <laughs> I think there was a little bit of a tension between him and the other um, Time Bandits because he felt that he was hired um, for his acting as opposed to his uh, size, and that the other actors mm-hmm. were uh, just cast. Uh-oh. Uh oh, I think Tom will be back here in a moment. Oh, let's get Tom back in here. Oh, there you are. There you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any, uh, anyway, you you were going on about David Rappaport and there being a little bit of a of a, a, a conf, or a little bit of a heat between him and the fellow yeah. ones for for yeah for their, yeah he he yeah. felt that he was uh he was hired for his acting and the others were hired for their size um oh. so <laughs> so he he kind of stayed away from them and uh so there was a tension that was built between them and um they they had to get rid of a later scene um when hmm. they go to um the 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 heart of darkness or wherever where they they got that castle um there was a a, a three witches scene um that they they got rid of um and they had to get a, a another bridge scene so they had the there's a scene where they're out in the middle of nowhere right. and um there's an argument that develops between all three of them or all six of them and um the, <laughs> and and so five of them are against uh, the david rapper part Sports character Randall, and they 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 let them really go to town uh, with their frustration, and that so you can really see that they're very upset with <laughs> with Randall at that point, hmm. and those are genuine emotions, and um, they noticed uh, the other actor who plays Wally, he was very much developing as a as a Jack, I think Jack Jarvis is his name, uh, as a as an actor um, that his. Uh, Purvis, yeah, Jack Purvis. Yeah. His acting was um, was developing quite well, and yeah, and the, the later scenes, um, especially that scene, he kind of stands out. And there's like a a scene where one of the the characters dies, and he has a very emotional scene there, and you can really see him really performing well. Um, and also, I think um, he, him and uh, Kenny Baker, they said, uh, had a comedy duo team. Uh, that they did, so they knew themselves, knew each other previously from this, um, which kind of made me wish that you know I could see some, maybe some of their comedy routine. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, between the two, <clears throat> be awesome. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. yeah, the the um, they don't they they do. Uh, I can I can understand like why it's, some adults would find this to be a different kind of pace that they're they like maybe, mm-hmm. uh, but everything kind of flows and crashes into the next all the way to the, to the very end. Um, and uh, yeah, John Cleese uh, is, is great, and, and they kind of pl- make fun of um, how royalty. Um, <laughs> John Cleese said that the, 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 their goal was kind of make fun of uh, how uh, you know uh, royalty in England. Whenever like there's a, a soccer match or in England's football match, right. uh, you know the, how the if a, a, a royals there, if they go down to the field and shake each of the uh soccer players hand the soccer players uh you know their oh, success right. or something and so um that's sort of how that right. that that scene plays out when robin hood's shaking the hands of the time bandits that's very much reminiscent oh, reminiscent sense. of that and to exaggerate right. john cleese's size um the actors are actually sitting down in that scene to exaggerate the uh, the size proportions. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they always play with proportion and scale too. With, with screwing with you um, in uh, many Monty Python yeah. uh, skits. I, and a big thing of this movie is uh, obviously there's the idea of you know how much of this is Kevin making up in his head. Is it completely imaginary in his head, or or how much of it's real? Uh, but uh, it. it it's beautifully done how much uh, from his, the beginning of the movie uh, is kind of uh, pushed forward through that. Everything in his room has ties to uh, the things that happen in the movie. Uh, a lot of the, like the toy soldiers down um, on his floor, uh, 
those that are uh, that show back up in the the movie, and um, you know his the Lego blocks, um, you know the the big castle at the end is made up of those Lego blocks, and even even if you look at the living room, uh, the the uh, plastic covering the furniture, you <laughs> notice the bad guys in this movie. Uh, the minions are covered in plastic. Interesting. I did not catch that. No. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, I was just looking at the, the Lego over here, right above, mm -hmm. right above the the shot mm -hmm. here, the still of that, mm -hmm. and then you have Superman right there. You you, I'm sure there there is like a million other things too. But the, yeah. yeah, that one of the things that that really uh, <laughs> uh, I was mark remarking on in his room is you know. Uh, <laughs> the lack of name brands uh, in there, like Mickey Mouse and you know all that oh, stuff, is oh, like a kid's yeah. room nowadays would to be covered in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, stuff. But uh, but yeah, the I, I like the look. I'm like, yeah, everything kind of has ties back to the to the so uh, quote unquote real world, um, and especially with uh, Kevin's room and then um, and then with his parents, the the evil stuff. Um, you know, you notice that the parents were obsessed with technology and and the latest things, no. and then the 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 Get guy the side yeah. of the show, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the evil genius in this movie, he's obsessed with technology mm -hmm. and, and and computers and whatnot. And uh, so, yeah, there's there's a very uh, cool little ties to that 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 don't stand out that you could pick up on on uh, um, you know various viewings of this. <laughs> Uh, but that that I, I love. Um, if you watch this movie and then go back and watch his room, yeah, the, it's amazing how much <laughs> that, uh, oh. reinforcing the the thought that well, how much of this is imagined, you know? <laughs> well, well, it, it, there the there were there were things I didn't catch all of them, but I saw a couple that you uh -huh. see later on in the film. Like there's like small little short shot of like his wall, and then mm -hmm. you know stuff that's on there you know like a boy's wall or whatever mm -hmm. posters and whatnot but there's a little bit yeah. of a of a thing i'm sure if you pause that you can go back and see it but um yeah and the production designer she said that um well they they shot the morocco stuff uh with sean connery first and then um right after that they shot the bedroom scenes so okay. they 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 didn't shoot the rest of the movie and she wished that they saved the bedroom scene for last so mm -hmm. that they could have put more stuff into the room but i think they did a quite a good job of kind of projecting what they're going to be doing uh into that room um but yeah it, it's um very cool and then <laughs> another thing with shooting uh the morocco's stuff first the very first scene that the kid got to do was with sean connery at the very beginning of the movie and um the kid was a bit starstruck with uh with sean connery oh was he really That's... yeah yeah they they got ahead oh, yeah sean connery was like yeah said well let's let's shoot this scene where we you know, with just the kid, the you know, the close-ups of the kid without me, <laughs> so that he he's uh, you know can do the scenes because yeah he was there like oh my gosh it's James Bond <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, I was waiting for you to get into the uh, the the kind of the dichotomy of the parents and the uh, <laughs> and the final final scene which it's mm -hmm. kind of like uh, it's funny how he he expertly weaves in a very satisfying end to the kind of imaginary or fant uh, fantastical we'll call it fantasy if uh, you know fantasy you know journey that they just did through presumably through time from the big man <laughs> the, the one above um so to speak um mm -hmm. and uh um, um and how technology uh and the mm -hmm. parents are kind of like made out to be you know kind of like just horrible <laughs> 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 yeah. just really really horrible parents now you don't get that impression right off the bat. You just kind of think they're just inattentive and they're just distracted. Mm -hmm. um, but as the when you get to the very end of the film, um, and the kind of the thing that happens there, um, mm -hmm. and they foreshadow it a little bit. They they do it very well. Um, the kind yeah. of like you're like, huh? I wonder what that part is going to be, and you'll find out in about five ten minutes um, <laughs> as you roll out to to the exit. Uh, with this yeah. One. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's um, like I said, there's a couple of scenes that they um, weren't able to film because of budget or, or they cut out. Um, there's like the three witches scenes. Uh, Terry says that he doesn't believe there's any footage of that remaining, so you won't kind get of those. 
<laughs> yeah. There's a uh, there's additional scene at the beginning when um, Kevin's um, trying to figure out what's going on with his uh, closet. <laughs> uh, the well, why stuff keeps coming out of his closet. There's a scene between the night coming through and the uh, the time bandits coming through. There's a scene where uh, the um, uh, pirates come through and then the 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 bed gets uh, is like floating in water with the the pirates, and then the next day, his parents are blaming for uh, wetting the bed because the bed's wet, <laughs> uh, which would probably have <laughs> kind of done <laughs> uh, done done more to uh, show the parents as uh, as bad parents probably, <laughs> or at least in Kevin's eyes, uh, <laughs> inattentive parents, um, yeah, maybe yeah. ones that should be. Uh, Busted for neglect, <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> like some some other character we know. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah the 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 other uh, parents are just awful. And I will say, I uh, kind of rule rewinded back to like the first third of the movie, like Agamemnon and and Sean Connery and 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 Kevin uh, Craig Warnock here. Uh, they they have that. You, he's really happy. He he's really happy. Um, mm-hmm. And and that's just interesting. It's just interesting that he he was like, no, I just want to stay here forever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I found my place. So yeah, <laughs> right. Like, hey, this is perfect. I'm good. I'm good, guys. I got I got uh, you know. Yeah. And he he didn't even care that the um, Sean Connery is a king. He didn't care mm-hmm. about any of that. He mm-hmm. just cares about the attention and and the um, yeah yeah the and affection it's nice. and, yeah. and yeah yeah yeah. And he's 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 wanting to like any uh, young. Uh, boy he's wanting to know about yeah he wants him to train him as a fighter and yeah you know, <laughs> sean godry uh, agamemnon he uh, it's like no let's uh, i'll teach you magic tricks <laughs> you know? right uh, well, let's 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 uh, enjoy your your childhood you know he's <laughs> which is in in stark contrast to what the parents and and consumerism mm-hmm. and the keeping up with the joneses and uh-huh. the technology side of it he's uh-huh. like this kid is like no dude i just want some sticks and um and a, a, a ball and a couple cups you know and then <laughs> here's the quarter out of your ear kind of thing you know <laughs> absolutely and then when the time bandits show up you know there, there's a lot less said but you know all the emotions kind of play across the face you you can see mm-hmm. kevin go oh no not these guys again right. oh no I'm, I'm gonna get sucked back in and no i i want to stay and um and then there's uh, a beautiful scene at the end there where uh, Sean Connery uh, realizes, you know, <laughs> he realizes, yeah, it wasn't the the magic trick isn't gonna. They weren't. They aren't coming back. And he he stands up and starts looking around in a uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, shock uh, over that they disappeared. Um, now, um, the they had to, the later scenes. We'll get a little bit into spoilers here. Uh, there's a uh, a big battle at the end of the movie, and Sean Connery's character was supposed to come back for the big battle and get killed in the process. Mm. Uh, but um, at that point, he was shooting another movie and couldn't come back at that point. Uh, so so um, instead, they rewrote it for uh, Kenny Baker's character Fidget, you know, the the most beloved uh, of the little uh, <laughs> little guys, uh, to mm-hmm. get killed. And um, and the, and gave that you know Jack Purvis the the a more emotional scene, uh, crying out for for his death, um, which I think it kind of works out quite well. And Sean Connery came back at the end as the fireman, uh, mm-hmm. which kind of kind of makes um, the the ending of the movie maybe not quite as dark as it as it could be. It's kind of the no. promise of coming back and uh maybe helping uh kevin out <laughs> and uh, but uh but yeah so yeah at the end uh we kind of danced around it but his his parents get blown up uh which in yeah and uh, i love that yes about they the, do yeah i love that about the movie because um it's so anti kids movie <laughs> you, know, you don't do that in a kids movie uh which is why it's so funny and why a right. monty python guy would think it up uh it's um it's perfect because the parents never listened to him and no. he he kind of learned uh learned a lot of stuff along the way but they mm-hmm. never learned anything and if they mm-hmm. only listened to him they'd still be around but uh but yeah so um and like one of the the executive producers Dennis O'Brien was very um, 
anti the ending of the movie. He wanted to change it until they did a screening of it uh, with a bunch of kids and parents. And uh, the first kid they asked, uh, what was your favorite scene in the movie? The kid goes, oh, when the parents got blown up. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> so so I kind of won the guy over to, okay, well, this is kind of a cool ending. And uh, Terry said that, yeah, most of the boys, uh, young boys that see the movie love the ending. And then, the, But the girls said, uh, the little girls would we're like, oh, but well, what happens to Kevin? You know, his parents are blown up. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Yeah. That 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 was one that that they were uh, research uh, had I had done it remarked on. Parents didn't like it, but the kids loved it. You know, so I can easily see that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, the, yeah. The parents want to be protective, <laughs> obviously, and but you know, the Terry said that you know these. These dark fairy tales and stories are supposed to tell kids, uh, you know, in a safe environment that that real, you know, real life dark things happen, and they can process these things. If you uh, show them all these only things that are nice and fluffy and not, right. you know, doesn't challenge the child to be you know <laughs> not not very uh well prepared to deal with uh, things in later life you know you, you're supposed to teach your kids to face those tough challenges and these these movies do it in a safe way and um you know it's, yeah. uh, there's certain movies that give you nightmares as a kid but those nightmares kind of teach you how to deal with them as well. It kind of well, processes it in your mind. And those movies stand out and become your favorite movies later in life anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well, it's not, there's no bubble wrap around things, you know. Uh, from Absol the, absolutely. I, that, that was kind of probably when we were kiddos was that was probably when that was getting started. And definitely in the 90s. And then it mm -hmm. kind of just rolled up all the way up to right, yeah. modern day. It, it, mm -hmm. We both know what that looks like. Um yeah, the only other thing we didn't talk about mm -hmm. was Shelley Duvall. <laughs> I just kind of, <laughs> I, 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 I don't mean to make light, too much light of, of this, but she was coming off of The Shining and did not have mm -hmm. a good time at all. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> and sadly for her, uh, this also, she did not, not quite the same, not quite as bad as she had it on, on that set. But mm -hmm. on this set, she got really uh, injured yeah. pretty seriously. Yeah. Um, and it kind of, it was kind of like probably one of the last times we saw her, you know, like kind of took, took the wind out of her sails for a lot of things. Um, but, you know, she did get back into it, but, um, yeah, yeah. Didn't have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I have on the criterion version, there is, a an old interview with her, but yeah, evidently, <laughs> um, there's a, a scene where the, well, two scenes where the, uh, the the time bandits fall onto her and Michael Palin and Terry was wanting to show um, the um, time bandits that it was uh, okay to fall by falling himself <laughs> uh, right. on them that you would actually miss miss the uh, actors when you fell and instead of actually <laughs> missing them uh, Shelley in the scene had this big headdress that uh had these huge horns on the sides of them and no. terry kind of caught one of them and yeah almost broke her neck <laughs> that's what i heard so, yeah, yeah 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 so uh yeah yeah uh but but, uh, but that that may not have been quite as bad as the uh, the shining because no. uh yeah she she said that in the interview with um um i think tom snyder it was uh the tomorrow show uh she said that um she uh, <laughs> uh that it, it was a a year and a month of filming on The Shining, and she said that that she spent like seven months of it uh, doing scenes where she's crying. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and having to do it over and over. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, she didn't have a, a a wonderful time with that. And then uh, she also did uh, Popeye during the. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. She did, yeah, Popeye, I saw that when I was pulling up. Which, her. Um, you know, she was born yeah. to play olive oil. That that's absolutely, her. yeah, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, which uh, Red Letter Media, funny enough, I, you know, I had Popeye on my mind, and Red Letter Media this weekend um, did a uh, kind of rewatch of uh, Popeye, <laughs> which uh, you know, that's um, the perfect you know, watch our show and then watch theirs of uh, 
uh, Popeye and get your 80s uh, Shelley Duvall <laughs> fix there. Double header. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And while we're talking about actors, let's talk about Ian Holm, who plays Napoleon uh, beautifully. <laughs> and oh, yeah. uh, he plays uh, Napoleon in a, a couple other movies and wore, I think, um, one of the other Napoleon movies he played in. Uh, he wears the same outfit, <laughs> so uh, so yeah, that that kind of worked out for him. Uh, he he's a great Napoleon, and then David Warner as the the evil genius. Uh, the the headdress of him, uh, that that sort of skeletal uh, glistening headdress uh, was inspired by Alien. Um, <laughs> that uh, uh that they weren't really <laughs> sure how how they were going to do him but uh but after seeing alien he wanted uh terry gilliam wanted that sort of um gelatinous her wetness of the the headdress <laughs> glistening and, yeah, yeah. glistening and uh very much um giger inspired uh skeletal uh apparatus that's on his head yeah, so, yeah and, and hands too yeah <laughs> yeah 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 and uh, so uh yeah and david warner was was all for that um and uh one thing um there's there's sort of like a labyrinthian kind of scene towards the end with these very steep stairway mm. and uh they said that they had to get a double for david warner to walk up those stairs because he he has really bad vertigo and, and he couldn't walk up that <laughs> wow i know that that's crazy yeah i was yeah. just trying to find uh one uh here we go that kind of spotlights it yeah 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 <laughs> yeah he's he has a very distinct look and uh yeah he's um it works yeah absolutely and um a little hidden gem in it there was going to be a seventh time bandit uh but they decided uh i guess the rumor was that they didn't do that because that may have been too similar to the seven dwarves uh oh. so but but his his name was horse flesh uh and there's a horse flesh in the credits and he's actually, uh, you'll notice a uh, smaller stature person in um, the, the evil castle kind of wandering around. Mm. That's that's Horseflesh. He actually shows mm. up as as one of the dark minions. And the idea, and actually within the dialogue of it, uh, Randall mentions that uh, one of them has died. And that's, that's Horseflesh. Uh, Flesh. Um, turned against him and is in the or he's maybe a, a turncoat and he's in the uh the dark castle so yeah there's there's sort of a little bit of uh maybe intrigue there <laughs> interesting uh, nice. which is uh they all kind of have interesting names and all of them all of their outfits kind of um kind of explain them um if you wanted to go back to like those black and white shots of uh each of the the time bandits to kind of kind of go over it but yeah there's um kenny baker uh he plays fidget and he's sort of like the kind of the lovable but absent-minded character and um right. he he's uh first shown with that sort of like uh that that, that kind of um uh, candle holding kind of sieve that's mm. on his head the you know, it, it's kind of uses it as like a helmet but it has like a holes in it and uh so it's sort of like a representative of his mind uh it doesn't hold water <laughs> and, oh uh, right on <laughs> yeah and uh stutter who's the more intellectual guy sort of has the bowler hat and kind of has a, a intellectual look to it and um you know randall who's more of the he he puts himself as the leader he's kind of he he uh has more of a military look to him um but yeah they kind of really kind of um, played with uh their looks and their personalities to really put it forth and then there's the supreme being which is um as we know uh ralph richardson uh sir ralph richardson sorry um he also if you're uh, familiar with our channel we also covered dragon slayer which he plays the uh the wizard in uh but ralph richardson also plays the supreme being god so to speak in this movie and uh I loved him in this. Uh, Terry Gilliam uh, says that, um, much like the guy who directed um, Dragon Slayer said, Ralph kind of tested him uh, to see if he's a, a good director, and he brought him over, uh, Terry Gilliam, over uh, before he took the role, and I was kind of feeding him gin. They kept drinking, and uh, oh, Terry goes, oh, he's he's a 
getting me drunk to see if uh, you know, I can hold my hold my water, so to speak. <laughs> and um, he said by the end of it, he was still uh, talking about the characters uh, coherently, and uh, Ralph was kind of drifting off, so <laughs> so he kind of won that battle. Uh, but uh, Ralph wanted uh, uh, Sir Richardson wanted to um, he didn't want to be in sort of a you know, the the suit at the end. He was kind of pushing more for a laid back kind of you know he, <laughs> if you know God is up in the sky, he's closer to the sun, so he'd wear something much more comfortable, you know, oh, right. kind of a loose fitting and you know. not this <laughs> dapper, you know, kind of older guy, older older gentleman, yeah. <laughs> So uh, Tarek, uh, uh, he said that he took the role quite seriously. Uh, he would uh, he had this little notebook and uh, he would underline scenes, uh, lines in the script in in red and would say, you know, God wouldn't say this. And then um, Terry goes, well, you know, if if he couldn't come up with a, a good reason why why he would say it. Uh, that he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's rewrite that. Right, <laughs> he said right he had a, a oddly uh, good understanding of what God would or wouldn't say. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> and uh, yeah. he he also came up with the idea of um, them putting uh, the the evil trash into a uh, post office box. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> the, yeah, right, right, yeah. Hurry up, pick it up, pick it up, boys. Come on now, don't leave any on the on the ground. <laughs> and I yeah. love that you know in a, a kids movie. Uh, sort of like, um, especially like, say, with the Wizard of Oz and stuff like that. Uh, the the kind of the guy behind the curtain kind of is sort of usually kind of a nice guy that kind of enlightens the situation and uh, kind of explains things and makes things better. Whereas yeah. this guy, he's he's the, not really that guy. <laughs> so he kinda, no. He's kind of like a, a strictly business guy. <laughs> and he's, like, let's let's get back to work. You know. Yeah, he's kind of like a Mr. Poppins uh, if there were <laughs> such a thing. But like even even. Uh, like maybe fifty percent less uh, talking. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. boys, let's go. Come on, come on. Yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, back to work. You're demoted. <laughs> right. You're taking a pay cut, but you're you're back with me. And <laughs> kind of right. like, and Kevin's sort of like an afterthought. They don't even care what happens to him, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> right. Which right. is, uh, yeah, very very different than what you would uh, see in a a normal kids movie. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's. The, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was. Um, mm -hmm. I think that this is like if you want to reconnect it uh, to your childhood. Maybe if you grew, if you're around the same ages as us, uh, which I think mm -hmm. most of you are uh, out there, uh, mm -hmm. we this is this. You're not going to be disappointed uh, in this mm -hmm. one if you haven't seen it. Um, and by extension, you know, um, <laughs> just the wonderful, just the the, yeah. the wonderful layers that are kind of woven in that you yeah. can't help but also see if you're any time familiar with Terry. Or Monty Python, or anything, or even British, you know, kind of sensibilities, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. The I it really uh, kind of educated me on British humor and and really kind of introduced me to it. Uh, this was probably one of the first British movies that I saw, and it, and then Monty Python kind of solidified my uh, my love of that kind of humor um, more so. You know, so that you know later in life when um, these raunchous uh, american comedies kind of came out there was like yeah I'll, I'll stick with my british comedies <laughs> but uh but yeah uh i i uh i really enjoyed it yeah the 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 giant kind of interesting they they said that they like something it didn't really work out to kind of emphasize his size uh so they got uh you know kind of mid-sized wrestler but he kind of kind of shows you the height and weight through his you know his stature in that uh but yeah um now uh dennis uh o'brien produced this movie um uh, and uh, they they had such a tough time with uh terry that they had so many arguments that this was the last movie that he did with uh terry gilliam did with him and dennis uh co-executive produced this movie with George Harrison. Both of them kind of ponied up the money for this. And uh, both Dennis and George thought that that George would do the music for the movie all the way through. And he had sort of a kind of a 
Snow White and Seven Dwarves idea of a, you know, hi-ho, hi-ho kind of feeling to the uh, music. And uh, mm-hmm. Terry Gilliam's like, nah, nah, this, this ain't it, bro. <laughs> right. And uh, so there was a, kind of a tension between them. And, uh, uh, but uh, they were able to, uh, they, they, they got to, George got to do the final song, uh, the credit song uh, at the end of the movie, which actually is actually a pretty decent George Harrison song um, that um, they didn't actually do a, a soundtrack or release a, a music soundtrack for it. So it didn't get released until three years later when uh george harrison released his next album Um. and uh but uh but yeah (laughs) one of the funny things about this uh which uh mike brought up the lyrics um the the first half of the song is sort of like a very reminiscent of the movie kind of kind of goes over the feeling of the movie but the second half of it is a diss track on terry gilliam (laughs) and if you read it it's a very much uh his his complaints or notes that he gave to terry and uh, someone pointed that out to Terry after the movie came out. He goes, "Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> that is a." So if you go down to, I think the verse three is when it starts. Um, yeah. Uh, so this this That's doesn't funny. really this doesn't really fall in with the lyrics uh, for a kids movie. It goes, "Greedy feeling, willing." Dilling, <laughs> losing what you want, <laughs> uh, see the dream come undone. <laughs> sort of like uh, his kind of feelings, like yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And then uh, going onto the bridge, uh, stumble you may with the uh, elementary luck you got so far. All you owe is apologies. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and this let's see uh, measure the mystery and astound without taking up time, which his his complaint about the movie was is taking too long, oh. and he just should just tell the story through the you know the astonishing and mystery of it. Uh, so that that was uh, <laughs> he's getting a, remains only a dream away. <laughs> so so yeah, Fair it's uh, <laughs> and then uh, it goes uh, back to the refrain of it. But yeah, so yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, back when diss tracks wasn't a thing, uh, <laughs> George Harrison did a diss track in the movie against Terry Gilliam and kind of buried it in there. <laughs> and, and it's a, it's a good uh, good little little song there. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, kinda, yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's uh, overall a uh, really enjoyable movie. Uh, definitely one of them that I remember quite a bit from my childhood. And uh, I kind of go back to revisit now and again. And, and a lot of kids' movies that you saw as a kid don't hold up. You know, those those classics that you had, you look back, you know, oh, Sometimes man, this they is... do, sometimes yeah. they don't. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And this is one of them that, that definitely holds up. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, go see it. Uh, that that would be a very strong recommendation uh, from from uh, us at the first last uh, to the nerdum. Uh, mm-hmm. Go go check this one out. You won't be disappointed. Call all nerds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, we we continue our our uh, uh, no, although not in a row. Like we did get in an eighties kick. Like we were doing pretty much um, <laughs> a, a block of eighties movies, which is perfectly <laughs> yeah. fine. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, it seems to do well with our audience. Uh, so yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, this does well as well. Uh, obviously, we don't go chasing clicks, but uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, we just like to uh, share our love for things and those people that that enjoy it. Um, definitely uh, enjoy it. But yeah, if you wanted to bring up, I, I saw you brought up an article about the new Time Bandits. Mm-hmm. We can uh, yeah, spend we a, a couple of here. minutes of it. Now these are these are the Time Bandits that we're seeing here on the screen there. And uh, yeah, it's very 2024. I, I, all I can say. <laughs> oh, I guess for some reason it doesn't want. To, let's let me go. Yeah, no. Um, we got Lisa Kudrow on board. We got yeah, <laughs> yeah. we got we got a few other people. Ian Morris, um, uh, the 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 ever famous producer of the beloved uh, What We Do in the Shadows, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> inspired by or, or or was originally his thing. Yeah, um, we'll see. Uh, I, so this is going to come out actually next month around this time, <clears throat> July twenty fourth. Um, so you won't have to wait very long if you if you are a subscriber to Apple Plus mm-hmm. um, or Apple TV Plus, excuse me. Um, mm-hmm. And you you can unlock all those. There's a there's a number of series that they've done that have been re- coming up over and over and over again that I've kind of sort of dipped the toe into, but I just haven't had the patience for. One is uh, for all mankind. I keep hearing that as a very good. Uh, stunner mm-hmm. there's um the uh 
uh, obnoxiously adorable and cute. Um, a Ted uh, Ted Lasso, I think mm-hmm. is, that's another one. Um, there's there's yeah. quite a few um, on Apple TV for sure. Yeah. Um, to uh, to go see. Maybe this will be another one. Um, I have no doubt that they have nothing but quality, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> Now, uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I always think of people that watch um, Apple TV Plus are much like people that watch uh, PBS. Um, they probably have like the the jacket with the elbow patches, you know. Um, you know, I'm thinking maybe you have a. a, a I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're 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 um um uh, downtown Abbey folks. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, time. maybe. <laughs> maybe yeah i uh, I, I, I know what you're i know the spirit of what you're driving at uh um, yeah but yeah no no disrespect uh yeah maybe a little bit but um no no uh, yeah like, uh, TV, what, what the, TD, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, I, I i i keep thinking about dipping my toe but there's not a lot there for me uh i know i, I kind of want to watch uh, that show severance i've heard good things about it as well there's a there's another law show too that keeps it keeps advertising on to me. Uh, I, I I switch up like I'll I'll go very long stretches with the Apple TV connected to the big screen, or uh, a Xbox or a, a computer laptop. But for the most part, uh, this is kind of like the default um, that I see. Uh, of course, I I watch, I have my own little things that I go through. Like uh, lately, I've been going through Mad Men. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but, uh, the you know, uh, yeah, the it's. Those those Hollywood executives going back dipping into the well of the '80s and the, yeah, I think they're 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 kind of yeah they're they they pulled Time Bandits out and it's Time Bandits time so yeah I don't have high hopes for it I think they're just trying to uh, nostalgia baiting um, I was I was kind of hopeful for Willow and it became like a huge mess and I think I kind of getting those vibes from this uh, although TD YTD uh, is doing it he's done some great things. He has recently done some bad things. Uh, that whole la- latest uh, Thor movie was a, a big turd. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> there's not a. I, I, I he's he's kind of kind of uh, tested our our uh, our tolerance for him. <laughs> yeah, I think he. I think we kind of hit the last uh, few nerves uh, over like the um uh the and, and now it's kind of not panned but made fun of a little bit lightheartedly, uh, sometimes heavily, uh, like where you have the. <laughs> group of heroes and then somebody makes a few wise cracks it's almost fourth wall breaking but not quite mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing it's like a kind of certain kind of flavor uh that comes with it but maybe yeah. um maybe it'll have just enough uh cuteness and and innocence woven into it um but uh it all kind of goes back to like well i mean i would i would show up for like one you know um i don't know that i think this is a tv show though i think this is kind of the point for this so i'm not quite i mean maybe i guess um i could easily see like where if you took the original movie and cut it up like that that might work um you know because it's kind of Mm. for lack of a better term like that's what it does essentially it has like little but you're seeing the the entire uh arc of the story yeah, and I think um, you know you think of what what could have been. Uh, Terry Gilliam uh, famously has had trouble making certain movies <laughs> over time. That uh, yeah, he just doesn't get uh, get those movies made like like um, other people. Um, there's always resistance to him making a movie. But he was going to do a Time Bandits two in 1996. They had wrote a script for it, mm-hmm. and um, it was going to re- uh, have the uh, surviving um, uh, actors come back as the Time Bandits, although uh, unfortunately Jack uh, Purvis at the time had uh, had a uh, car accident and was, um, I think, paraplegic, and he, they were going to write that into the role, and um, I think two others, uh, unfortunately Dave Rappaport had committed suicide, so he was, mm-hmm. he was gone, and then I think another one had died, uh, which caused the movie to be indefinitely put on hold, and uh, obviously it's probably never going to get made. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, so that's uh, sort of uh, what what could have been. Uh, but yeah, David Rappaport, Terry kind of talked about it in the commentary. He said that he went to Hollywood and found some very good success in that. But he th- he felt that maybe he kind of got caught up in that Hollywood grind of you know you're just not quite good enough and. Uh, 
unfortunately kind of did his head in but mm. um but yeah yeah he you can tell in the movie he's he's um quite a gifted actor oh absolutely yeah no the the we'll, we'll see uh you know you never know this could the 10 episodes uh for the going back from the new to the old uh it's a, mm-hmm. it would have been very interesting if they have would have been able to do that uh in the, in the 90s really 90s the uh, time been time minutes too <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah it would would have been uh been interesting yeah and with terry's um the flair for um <laughs> for the absurd and, and uh interesting he would have uh, definitely made it interesting yeah now i don't you when you're an executive producer which he is on the tv show um the executive producer doesn't always mean you have very much control it's a lot mm-hmm. of times kind of a, a nod saying okay yeah you're you did the the old thing let's do the new thing and <laughs> they usually don't have very much control of it at all but right. if they're smart they'll listen to him <laughs> oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah no this one is one watch um and then maybe mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes like i, I doubt this is going to make a very big splash because yeah. um unless un- apple tv is pretty much low key mm-hmm. Um, and they don't do, um, they don't bother with like, you know, big ad, you know, mm-hmm. big, 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 uh, big ad, uh, campaigns, that <laughs> sort of thing. Um, they just don't need to, um, cause like, <laughs> what they're doing is like, if you have an iPhone or iOS or something, you, they give you, they, they hand out three months, uh, six months, uh, mm-hmm. just like every other streaming service. Yeah, um, but it, it, we'll see. Uh, you never know. Lisa Kudrow is funny. I've always thought she was funny. Yeah, but as a time um, I'm just not quite I, I, Yeah, you're not. She's for comedy for it to for me to show up. Well, I don't know well, a lot of these people. Um, Lisa Kudrow's. Yeah, she's an, a fine actress and all, but as a time bandit, I don't see it. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, there's there's certain roles and and actors where you don't see it on the surface, like. Uh, Famously, no one saw Michael Keaton as Batman except Tim right. Burton, and they were able to pull it off wonderfully. But you're really going to have to sell me on uh, Lisa Kudrow as a time bandit. Uh, just, just I'm not buying it right now. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to sell it to me. Sell it to me hard. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, give it a give it an episode yeah. or two, and I'll, I can report back to you as to be that. Yep, the yep. There you go. Yeah. Play on the wall uh, and see if I get stuck. <laughs> um stuck on it or not um but uh, as, it, as it goes but yeah mm-hmm. this one was very fun um we're coming up here on the i think we're coming up on the other you have any other things or aspects you wanted to no nah. cover i think we're we're good all right we're all ready well we'll, we'll um we'll um kind of dip back into our bona fides here and 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 do some plugging um uh we we really appreciate it if you could like comment subscribe uh tell us mm-hmm. what you think and we did hit 200 shame on me for not knowing when we when we hit that mark so we'll have to do mm-hmm. something special maybe um maybe next time to uh, commemorate that and and call it the mm-hmm. 201 we'll call it 201 uh, actually this will actually uh, this will be 201 so maybe we'll do 202 <laughs> and recognition yeah. to um you know uh, two 200 uh 200 things that we've done on this um uh, we mm-hmm. we love growing with you guys uh you know um do your best uh and and more importantly um go out and find what you like um and then invite your friend um maybe if you if they haven't mm-hmm. seen it um that's mm-hmm. what we like to we like to do this uh every every week um but um we're also uh like like uh mentioned tom is the uh the director of social media the the ceo of our mm-hmm. of our socials <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> on on reddit uh, as well as uh twitter and uh, get the word out uh, and then i'm always available on 8 inc um and then our bona fides here with the, the yat with the silliness and all the things that you can find me and Tom at. Mm-hmm. Um, but m- 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 most importantly, um, get out there and go watch something really fun. Uh, I'll, I'll do the last plugging for the last two picks that we did. You picked Furiosa of a recent, um, recent mm-hmm. um, thing that we did. And then uh, I picked out uh, House of the Dragon, which I will be going to watch after this. Um, I have mm-hmm. no doubt you will too. Um, <laughs> yep. And we might do, uh, maybe we, we might catch each other up sometime in the week and try to do gaming or something i don't know <laughs> i gotta I, the hell divers thing is still isn't working um whatever i gotta plug it in and see um but mm-hmm. uh in any case um <clears throat> i think we're about ready for us to play play uh, us out with our new theme uh, mm-hmm. what do you think yeah i think so yeah Right. Yeah, I hear I'm that gonna... everybody's everybody's playing the new uh elden ring dlc i know did, didn't you pick up Elden Ring at one I point? I did. I did. I played probably about a quarter of the way through, but I'm a terrible 
player, and then I mm -hmm. no doubt it fell through the cracks of like what Mike does for gaming, which is not a <laughs> whole, whole hell of a lot. Like, um, <laughs> just don't have that much time. Um, what I would love to do, like aside from bespoke ones like Starfield, where I did, I sunk like four, five hundred, I don't know, something ridiculous uh, hours, and then I like once I hit saturation, I'm done. Mm -hmm. um you know i'm probably not gonna ever go back to it but that's kind of what happened mm -hmm. with fallout 4 too for me mm -hmm. um and then my heart was very much broken on fallout 76 but uh but mm -hmm. in any case um that's that's how it goes i heard that the, they've done some improvements on that i don't know enough to <laughs> oh 76 yeah oh yeah yeah no 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 i absolutely i've kind of kept up a, a little bit uh, here and there um they have mm -hmm. i i i think it's a completely different game uh, it's tolerable, mm -hmm. I believe, but I, I never yeah. went back to it. But maybe mm -hmm. one of these days, but I just it, it just not not in the cards for me personally. But uh, <laughs> more than likely, okay. but yeah, Elden Ring, and then everybody was complaining about it about how hard it was because um, you mm -hmm. can't buy the new, you can't get the new thing without owning the original thing or something like that. Because well, I they, think you have to get to a certain certain level point, or, or yeah, yeah point in the game. Or, it is and, uh, really hard. That is not an yeah. easy game. Yeah, and I heard that only sixty percent of the people that own the game have gotten to that point. So, <laughs> so it's uh yeah, but uh but yeah, I was gonna say um you know if you wanted to maybe stream that and I could watch along with you, but uh, but yeah, it sounds like there, uh, <laughs> there has been a few actually a few games that I've got that are are in that vein that um mm -hmm. I would like to uh, kind of put on. Yeah, and, and wasn't there course, um wasn't there one um uh, was it the invisible or something like that or the invincible? Yep, invincible. Yep, that, that was uh, from last summer. Um, that we were tracking. Mm -hmm. I was tracking over it, and then mm -hmm. I was excited. Um, mm -hmm. and then I never finished it. And then actually, there was another game too called Solaris, um, mm -hmm. or something like that. It had to do with Mars. Um, that it, uh, unrelated to that one, but um, the mm -hmm. I, I do want to play that one again. Uh, I've only played the first five minutes, um, mm -hmm. and I just I just didn't get a chance to go back to it. Uh, um, <laughs> But this summer, I'm going to have. Uh, actually, I actually had some time this week. I should have done that. Should have done that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I definitely, um, sometime, sometime in July, I'm going to take a whole week off. I'm not going to do a damn thing. Uh, <laughs> not log in for work because I work from home. So like, it's mm -hmm. kind of like it gets yep. monotonous sometimes. But uh, yeah. 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 And I finished uh, Resident Evil 4. Oh, yeah. That's right. And. And was it in Final Fantasy? Now, uh, monkey related. I'm, no, I, I finished uh, Resident Evil Four, and yeah, I'm, I'm playing Final Fantasy Seven. I'm hoping uh, right. I'm probably about halfway through that, so hopefully I'll, I'll uh, get through that. But uh, but this week, uh, Super Monkey Ball uh, Bananas, I think, comes out, or, or one of the okay. Super Monkey right. Ball ones. Uh, I was kind of wanting to maybe dip my toe into that, and then I think in August there's like a big um, RPG. I forget what it's called, but it's uh, Stars of Monkey in uh chinese mythology and oh. I, I was like that one looks kind of interesting <laughs> very cool very cool yeah well we got plenty of plans here uh lined up for summer a little little kind of free play uh thing here as we roll on uh, and mm -hmm. we are like we're not far away from fourth of july um yep. for sure so that's coming up um, so watch us for the fireworks <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely yeah yeah we'll we we we, uh, we will be back with you next week um, in mm -hmm. the meantime, we hope you go go check out our back catalog. Go see what you like, see what you mm -hmm. don't like. Um, yep. You know, we kind of kind of tested the waters mm -hmm. and put a little bit more opinionated thing on there. Yep. If you uh, get get too hot out there, just uh, come back, chill with us, watch a couple of our videos. We'll take care of you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But yep. uh, I've I've been Mike. And I'm Tom. Stay safe out there. <laughs>